Now let's take a look at a complete sequence of CPR with the initial assessment followed by cycles of compressions and breaths. Now watch carefully because you'll get a chance to practice all these steps together soon. Look. Sir, are you okay? Sir, can you hear me? Mike, he's not responding. I'll get help from the ED. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, third. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we've covered almost all of the skills of CPR. Now let's add the assessment steps that lead up to compressions and breathing. First of all, you'll want to assess the victim's responsiveness. This starts with tapping the victim and shouting to get their attention. Hey, are you okay? Sir, can you hear me? Mike, he's not responding. I'll get help from the ED. If the victim doesn't respond, activate the emergency response system if you are not EMS and get an AED. If you are in an out-of-hospital setting, you'll call either 911 or your local emergency response number. If you are in an in-hospital setting, you may generally call a code and get a crash card. Hey, are you okay? Sir, can you hear me? You, activate the emergency response system and get an AED. Then, check the victim's pulse. Maintain a head tilt with one hand and locate the trachea using two or three fingers of the other hand. Slide these fingers into the groove between the trachea and the muscles at the side of the neck where the carotid pulse can be felt. Make sure you check for a pulse on the side closest to you. It's important to remember that One, you should spend two, at least three, five, four, but no five, more than six, ten seconds seven, eight, trying to locate nine, the pulse. Ten, 11, if you do not 12, find the pulse 13, within ten 14, seconds, 15, move 16, on to cycles 17, of chest 18, compressions 19, and breaths. Fill of one hand on the center of the bare chest between the nipples. Then, put the other hand on top of the second. Make sure the long axis of the heel of your hand is on the breastbone to reduce the chance for rib fracture. Your shoulders should be right over your hands and your elbows should be straight. Either extend or interlace your fingers to keep them off the victim's chest. You're going to push straight down on the victim's chest, ensuring that you're pushing directly on the breastbone. For adults and children that have reached puberty, you'll press down one and a half to two inches. After each compression, let the chest come back to its normal position, ensuring full chest recoil. This allows blood to flow into the chest and heart. 
perform three sets of 30 compressions at the rate of 100 per minute, counting out loud as you press. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, now you know the basics of mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. It's a quick, effective way of providing oxygen to a victim. However, as mentioned previously, you and Sally are healthcare professionals. As such, you're required to use standard precautions whenever there is exposure to blood or other bodily fluids, like saliva. These precautions include using barrier devices, such as a face mask. A face mask usually has a one-way valve and diverts exhaled air away from the rescuer. There are different sizes for adults, children, and infants, so make sure you're using the appropriate size for a victim. The mask should only cover the victim's mouth and nose. It should not extend over the victim's eyes. Okay, here's your chance to try mouth-to-mask breathing. You should already be in position to practice. Once again, practice along with the video and make sure you see the chest actually rise with each breath you give. We'll practice five sets of two breaths together. You ready? Here we go. Kneeling next to the victim, Place the mask on the victim's face, using the bridge of the nose as a guide for correct position. Seal the mask by placing the index finger and thumb of your hand closest to the top of the victim's head along the border of the mask. Place the thumb of your other hand along the lower margin of the mask. Open the airway using a head tilt chin lift. Press the mask down and lift the jaw to hold the mask tightly against the face and give two breaths while watching for chest rise. Each breath should be delivered over one second. Okay, you know how to do compressions and give breaths. Let's practice them together. We're going to do three cycles of 30 compressions combined with two breaths using mouth to mask breathing. Remember to press down one and a half to two inches when you compress and allow full chest recoil. You should already be in position, so practice along now as we combine both steps into one sequence. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Sometimes rescuers will only give breaths without chest compressions. This is called rescue breathing. Ventilation is more effective when providing rescue breathing for an unresponsive, non-breathing victim when you use a bag mask system. A bag mask device consists of a ventilation bag and a face mask. The bag may or may not contain a valve to prevent rebreathing of exhaled air. The bag mask system is the most common method of providing rescue breathing in healthcare settings and during two rescuer CPR. It can be used with or without an oxygen source and comes in a variety of sizes. If you're using supplementary oxygen with the bag mask, the delivery method is exactly the same as without supplementary oxygen. Deliver each breath over one second, making sure you do not deliver the breath too quickly or forcefully. This will help reduce the chance of gastric inflation air going into the victim's stomach instead of his or her lungs. If too much air enters the stomach, it can cause vomiting and potentially aspiration. If you're performing two rescuer CPR, you can use the EC clamp technique to hold a mask in place. This technique requires instruction and practice. Here's your chance to do it. As before, practice along with the video. Are you ready? Here we go. First, position yourself directly above the victim's head. 
place the mask on the victim's face using the bridge of the nose as a guide. Use the thumb and index finger of one hand to make a C to press around the edges of the mask. The remaining fingers of your hand should form an E to lift the angle of the jaw and open the airway. Make sure you squeeze the mask with your thumb and the heel of your hands while lifting the jaw to achieve an airtight seal. Squeeze the bag with your other hand or push it against your leg or body. If the chest doesn't rise, then you are not providing adequate breaths. Adjust the mask, reposition the head and neck, or administer a larger amount of air. With or without supplementary oxygen, give one breath every five to six seconds. Practice this now for one minute. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, when another eight, rescuer nine, is available ten, to assist 11, with CPR 12, at the scene, 13, the 14, second rescuer 15, should activate 16, the emergency 17, response 18, system 19, if he or 20, she is not EMS and get an AED. Five, six, Help is on the way. 28, 29, 30. In two rescuer CPR, each rescuer has specific roles. The first rescuer performs chest compressions and counts out loud. The second rescuer maintains the open airway and gives breaths. The compression rate for two rescuer CPR is approximately 100 compressions per minute. The compression ventilation ratio is 30 to 2. Compression should be paused when giving ventilations until an advanced airway is in place. When performing CPR without an AED, rescuers should switch roles every two minutes to prevent fatigue. This switch should take less than five seconds, minimizing hands-off time. Rescuers also need to assess the rescue effort. The person ventilating the victim must observe the chest compressions that are delivered, encourage the compressing rescuer to push at an adequate rate and depth, and ensure that full chest recoil occurs after each compression. Things change slightly when you perform two rescuer CPR on children who are up to the age of puberty. For these CPR guidelines, puberty is defined as chest or underarm hair on males and breast development on females. In this case, you'll use a ratio of 15 compressions to two ventilations. If you think someone has suffered a cardiac arrest, first, check for response. Mr. Garner, Mr. Garner, can you hear me? If the victim does not respond, one rescuer should activate the emergency response system and get the AED. Pam, call 911. Barbara, get the AED stat. While another rescuer goes to activate the emergency response system and get the AED, continue for a pulse. And if you do not definitely feel one within 5 to 10 seconds, quickly move or remove the clothes from the front of the chest that will get in the way of providing chest compressions and apply the AED pads. One, two, three, four, five, six, Provide cycles seven, of eight, 30 chest nine, compressions 10, and two breaths 11, 12, and use the 13, AED 14, when it is available. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Keep in mind that if you are alone and find an unresponsive adult, you'll have to activate the emergency response system and get the AED. For a child victim, give five cycles of CPR. Then activate your emergency response system. However, if you are alone and witness a child collapse suddenly, activate the emergency response system and get an AED immediately. Then return to the victim to provide CPR and defibrillation as needed. One, two, three, four, five, six, When the AED seven, arrives, eight, put it near the rescuer nine, who will ten, be operating 11, the AED 12, and turn it on. 13, Some AEDs turn on when you lift the cover. 
Others have a power button. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Open the AED pad package and peel off the plastic backing. Press the sticky side on the victim's bare chest. Place one pad on the upper right side of the bare chest to the right of the breastbone. Put the other pad a few inches below the left armpit. With two rescuers, don't stop CPR until the AED pads are attached to the chest and you are ready to let the AED analyze the victim's heart rhythm. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. The AED is now ready to check the victim's heart rhythm. Most AEDs begin to check the rhythm as soon as the pads are attached and connected. For others, you press an Analyze button. Analyzing Seven, heart eight, rhythm. Nine, 10, 11, Say clear. 12. If the AED finds a heart rhythm that could be treated with a shock, the AED will tell you so. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. The AED will then tell you when to push the shock button. I'm clear, you're clear. Clear. We're all clear. When the shock is delivered, the victim's muscles will jerk. The One, AED two, will then tell you three, to start CPR, four, five, beginning six, with chest compressions. Seven, eight, nine, ten, Begin 11, CPR. 12, 13, 14, 15, After five 16, cycles of 30 compressions 18, and two 19, ventilations, 20, 20, pause 20. for the AED to analyze. Analyzing heart rhythm. If indicated, press the shock button and switch rescuer roles. No shock advised. Begin CPR. One, two, Repeat the sequence of four, CPR five, and AED six, use until seven, advanced eight, life support nine, providers ten, take over 11, or 12, the victim starts 13, to move. 14. So, now you know how to use an AED with two rescuer CPR. CPR is performed slightly different when a victim has an advanced airway such as an endotracheal tube, combi tube, or laryngeal mask airway in place. Two rescuers no longer deliver cycles of CPR. Instead, the compressing rescuer should continue chest compressions at a rate of 100 per minute without pausing for ventilation. However, ventilation changes to one breath every 6 to 8 seconds, about 8 to 10 per minute, being careful to avoid hyperventilation. Also, there is no pausing to provide breaths. Compressions continue as breaths are given. The following scene in progress demonstrates the differences when performing CPR on a victim with an advanced airway in place. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. After five cycles of two rescuer CPR, rescuers should switch roles. There are a couple of special considerations to keep in mind when performing CPR on children ages 1 through puberty. Hey, hey, are you okay? You, call a code and get a crash cart. Children ages 1 through puberty will need a lower volume of air for adequate breathing during CPR. It is especially important to use enough air to visibly see the chest rise. However, if you find difficulty ventilating the victim, reopen the airway and be sure to create a good seal around the mouth or mask and reattempt the breath a couple of times, looking for chest rise. If the child does not have a pulse, or the pulse is less than 60 beats per minute, provide CPR starting with chest compressions. You should perform five cycles, about two minutes, of CPR before leaving the prepubescent victim to activate the emergency response system. However, if you are alone and witness a child collapse suddenly, activate the emergency response system and get an AED immediately. Then return to the victim to provide CPR and defibrillation as needed. Also, to compress the chest of a child, one, compress two, to three, a depth of four, one third five, to one half six, the depth seven, of the chest. Eight, nine, when ten, performing compressions 11, on smaller 12, children, 13, use either one or two hands as needed to compress the chest one third to one half its depth. Hey, hey, are you okay? You, call a code and get a crash cart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Well, those are the variations of CPR for children one year of age to puberty. Any emergency can seem scarier when an infant is involved. However, the principles of performing CPR on infants less than a year old are the same as they are for adults and older children, with a few slight differences. To begin, let's take things in the same order as we did for adult CPR. To perform CPR for infants under a year old, let's start with the easiest part, compressions. You'll learn other steps to go with this later in the proper order, but for now, we'll just be doing compressions. First, imagine a line between the baby's nipples. This is the intermammary line. Due to the infant's small size, you'll just put two fingers of one hand just below the nipple line over the lower half of the breastbone. Be careful not to press on the very bottom or tip of the breastbone. Make sure the surface under the baby is firm and that you keep the airway open with your other hand. Press the chest down about one-third one, to one-half the depth three, of the chest. Four. Five, After each six, compression, seven, completely eight, release nine, the pressure ten, on the breastbone, allowing the 13, chest to recoil 14, completely 15, 16, After each compression, 17, 18, 19, give 30 20, compressions 20, in a row. 22, 23, Count out loud as you press. 26, 27, the rate is about 28, 100 per minute. 30. This is called the two-finger technique, and it's the preferred technique if you're a lone rescuer. One. Okay, now let's put together the entire sequence of one rescuer CPR for an infant. First, check for responsiveness. Jesse. Jesse, oh come on, sweetie. If the infant doesn't respond, shout for help. I need some help here. What do you need, Candace? Go ahead and call a code and get a crash cart, please. With infants, palpate a brachial pulse by gently pressing two or three fingers on the inside of the upper arm, between the elbow and shoulder. Do this for no more than five to ten seconds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Baby, baby, help a quick of the spring crash One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two.
When you have two rescuers doing infant CPR instead of one, there are two main differences. Where you position your hands and fingers for doing chest compressions and the compression ventilation ratio. First of all, the preferred technique for giving compressions in two rescuer situations is called the two thumbs encircling hands technique. Place both thumbs side by side, just below the nipple line, over the lower half of the breastbone, ensuring that the thumbs do not compress on or near the tip of the breastbone. The thumbs may overlap in very small infants. Encircle the infant's chest and support the infant's back with the fingers of both hands. With your hands encircling the chest, use both thumbs to depress the breastbone approximately one-third to one-half the depth of the infant's chest and use your fingers to squeeze the chest. After each compression, release the pressure on the breastbone to allow it to recoil completely. Deliver compressions in a smooth fashion at the rate of 100 per minute. With this method, you will only perform 15 compressions and then wait for the second rescuer to open the airway with a head tilt chin lift and give two breaths. Coordinate compressions and breaths to avoid simultaneous delivery and to make sure the chest rises adequately. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Besides hand location and compression ventilation ratio, rescuers switch roles after every five cycles of CPR to prevent fatigue. The cart's on its way. When the second rescuer is available, have them switch and take over compressions while the first rescuer delivers breaths. When performing two rescuer infant CPR, you'll drop the ratio of compressions to 15 for every two breaths. Remember, this is only done for two rescuer infant or child CPR. Okay.